devil's throat beyond them. Knelt down and prayed, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me. Yet not my will, but yours be done. An angel from heaven appeared to him and strengthened him. And being in anguish, he prayed more earnestly. And his sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground. When he rose from prayer and went back to the disciples, he found them asleep. Exhausted from sorrow. Why are you sleeping? He asked him. Get up and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. And I chose that because I think like everybody deals with temptation. Um, it's a struggle for like communion. And I think Jesus shows us like what we should do. I think like when you're dealing like temptation and sorrow, like it's actually just sleep in it. It's like it drains you, make you lazy, tired. I think the disciples were showing just that. So like we see what happens, like because it says when he prayed, the angel from heaven appeared to him and strengthened him. It's like that's why he encouraged us to like pray mm -hmm. so that we can have strength to overcome the temptation. It's like so many times we need to pray. Mm -hmm. I think like prayer serves as like a strength and it's like a consultation. 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 Mm. That is counseling but of a different form. I think it is um it's difficult needing counseling and not knowing where to get it from mm -hmm. but like they're consumed and upset but who do they go to after he passes mm -hmm. you, you you know how um, you can be about to leave and the days that lead up to it should be happy but you know you're about to take off so they're sad consuming days I think people want to want to stretch out and make the most of like their time left but they can't because they know it's the last part of their time left. So I'm, I imagine at the at the last supper the disciples trying to tell jokes to make them feel better and he's in just a down mood. They make the joke about who's going to be the greatest in the kingdom. And he takes offense to it. He's like, you're worried about that. You should be worried about what I'm telling you. I'm about to die. But they get it. It's just this moment is hard enough as it is. Mm -hmm. Don't you right. see that they're opposed by, mm -hmm. by demonic mm -hmm. entities. They're, they're opposed by the evil spirits in the room. Mm -hmm. By like the bad mood, the bad vibes. Mm -hmm. And Jesus comes in and he's mm -hmm. so serious but just wash their feet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think the disciples are caught off guard but so is he. Because when you're in it, it's not funny. When when you're in it, you really can't even smile about it. When you're in it, it looks like the devil's beside me. I'm trying to find out what mood matches the scene. Yeah. It says, don't go to sleep. Mm -hmm. And they're exhausted. Mm -hmm. It says, don't go to sleep. And I'm tired. Don't go to sleep and it's killing me. Looking at what I see staying awake. But the alternative to seeing it is just shedding your eyes to it. And he tells them that the place that you'll be when you're asleep is off guard. Not that you have to fight, but stay on guard. I think prayer is it, the sword and shield for your entire spiritual and your natural. Mm -hmm. the prayer puts you in a, I think, a humbling position, but prayer puts you in, 
in the real list of where God is in this position. Mm-hmm. You, you, you ever been in a bad spot and prayer helped you get to a better position? If prayer will change your position. The, the disposition was against you, but prayer changed their position about you. It says prayer will change your position. That's what he tells them. He says, your position is asleep and I need you awake. So I think when Jesus finds them asleep, he wakes them, but then he goes back and strengthens them. They were asleep. Jesus goes to pray for them, finds them asleep, wakes them, strengthens them, and then goes back and prays for them. The disciples are asleep. He finds them asleep. He wakes them, strengthens them, goes back, and prays for them. He, he, here's where this comes into critical part of the text. Many times in life, you are asleep. You're asleep to the grace of God of how good he's been. You're asleep to God blessed you to wake up and see everything that you're not even thankful for. God, God blessed you while you were sleeping on him, doubting him, not believing him, not doing what he called or assigned for you to do. You were asleep. Mm-hmm. And, and a lot of the times you fall asleep and find yourself in a nightmare, find yourself in a bad dream. Ever woke up and the whole storm, the whole world, the whole scene was whirling against you. It was storming against you. It was raining on you. It says God didn't leave you, but he found you. So he comes back and finds them asleep. And today I'm thankful that he can find me. You hear me? I'm, I'm thankful that in my dream, that in my nightmare, that in my hurricane, in my whirlwind, in, in, in my up and down, in my being doubted, all I, in, in every place that I would be asleep to me, that a greater power of God that was calling me, that a greater assignment that was on me, that he found me. It says he saw them asleep, found them asleep, but he didn't leave me. And here's good news for somebody, that God didn't leave you there. But he asked you to wake up, to get up. There was a command put over them while they were asleep. The rise. You, you got to know regardless of what pit you find yourself in, God can pull you out of it. Doesn't matter what circumstance you look at, God can pull you out of it. Doesn't matter what you look at, how you look at it, how you feel about it, what's in your body, what they said over your life. No matter what the diagnosis is. Don't know what tomorrow holds or what they said that it cannot or would be. Jesus comes back and looks at them and then calls them to get up. And I got to tell you today, you have to get up. You got to get up from the place of being doubted and say that you're going to rise up anyway. You got to get up from being asleep to everything that's the greater you that God put inside of you because he formed you and created you. You got to get up to rise and see that everything God mission for me is not to sit here and sleep, but to go there and do it because God put it on me. For me to fulfill it, he says, I want you to get up, but I haven't left you there just getting up. I've given you instructions on what to do after you get up. He says, even when you find yourself not knowing what to do, here's how you do it. Get up because I'm strengthening you. You you may have only enough power, enough might, enough strength just to get up from this moment. But then what do you do? And for somebody that's trying to find out, God, maybe I've been fighting and I have but just a little bit of strength left. Let me tell you, he goes on to pray for you. That he didn't just strengthen you for this moment to survive your last battle, to get through your last fight, to come through the last war and come here and stand only to fall and die. He says, I'm going to strengthen you even after I've called you to get up. He says, I pray for you. Quiet, Jaden. I'm praying for you. So I'm, I'm, I'm praying that your faith won't fail. I'm, I'm, I'm praying that the heart won't die from you being opposed by this hell. I'm praying that your friends next to you don't leave you and betray you. I'm praying that they don't deny you and turn on you. I'm praying that regardless of what you do, that you always see that it was God helping you, leading you, guiding you. I'm praying for you. 
That's what he said. He says, I'm, I'm praying for you in the garden. So when you go to the city, you know, I've prayed for you. I'm praying for you on the cross. So when you know that you're opposed, being held hand to the world, uh, to the whirlwinds of attack and defeat, then you know I've prayed for you. So I'm praying for your feet, that though they nailed them, that you will be able to see that God walked away. He walks you into your greater destiny. I'm praying for your eyes. You'll never see tears like this again. I'm praying for your hair. You don't stress out like that anymore. I'm praying for the stone. That though they covered you in it, doubted you about it, that you can rise out of it because he was the cornerstone. I'm praying for you. So he tells his disciples, I'm praying for you that you not only get up, but that you go on.